Hello everyone, my name is Sylvester, uh, your accounting teacher. Uh, I just want us to go through uh, our subsidiary journals. As you know, uh, they occupy a larger share towards our assessment. So I just want us to quickly go through the theoretical part of it. And the other session, I'll make sure that I show you how to record some of the calculations in order to simplify some of the complex uh, calculations. Uh, firstly, guys, I just want us to look at the slides. Yes, these slides uh, are uploaded. So I've been uploaded on your PCN. You can go and access them. But I just want us to quickly go through these slides so that we can be able to understand better. You know, sometimes when you are writing uh, your assessments, uh, obviously you're expecting to have transactions when it comes to the journals themselves. And again, when it comes to account equation, they always give you uh, transactions, and you must know how to analyze those transactions. But when it comes to the journal, sometimes the examiners are not very specific when it comes to the transactions. For example, when they sell inventory, sometimes they are not very specific. They don't normally say, we sold for cash or we sold on trade. They just say sale of trading inventory. The question is, what am I going to do in those situations where examiners are not very specific? It means that you need to master your source document. It means the examiner will give you a source document so that you can be able to know whether you sold goods for cash or you sold goods on trade. By looking at that source document, you must know where to work. Yes, here I just uh, gave you examples of the source documents that you will commonly found in those uh, journals. The first one is here is the duplicate receipt, which must go to the cash book receipts. The duplicate cash slip, which must go to the cash book receipts only. And those are the examples of the source documents that you will find in your assessments. Please, you need to know your source documents. Just to explain briefly when it comes to source document. Normally when you see the word duplicate or the copy, it means you as the business, you were the one who sold to someone else. So you are the one who was offering the service. That's why you retain the duplicate. In most cases, duplicates are retained by the issuers of those source documents. Meaning if I'm selling to my customers, I will give them original and I'll retain one duplicate. Remember, we don't care about what we issued to someone else. We care about what did we retain after issuing those source documents. So a duplicate, it means you are the one who was selling in most cases. So it means if you can have an original, what does that mean? It means you are the one who is buying from someone. So it means original means you are the buyer in most cases, and the duplicate it means you have been what the provider or the seller of that particular uh, product. So you need to familiarize yourself with this uh, duplicate and original. But I believe that you will get used to them as you use them. I don't want to waste time now. Let me go through those channels briefly so that when you see them in future, you can be able to understand them. The first channel that I'm going to focus on now is called the cash book receipts or CBR formerly known as the Cash Receipt Journal, or CRJ. I want us to quickly go through this uh, journal. As you can see here, we have got the document number. The document number is where you are going to record the receipt number. For example, if your receipt number, for example, is receipt number 7, for example, it can be given to you as what? R7. Can you see now? So it means that is the source document. And thereafter, they will give you a date. Obviously, a transition must take place on a particular date. And again, for you to receive the cash, you need to make sure that you code the source. If you receive cash from Varsity College, you're going to write Varsity College here as what? Well, as your details. And sometimes when it comes to sales, they are not very specific about. Uh, the source uh, from whom did you, uh, uh, to whom did you sell, what must you do? You will put cash sales here. But you will understand as the time progresses because we will have to make sure that we know how to record. 
good. For now, I'm just going to skip the rich, uh, the folio part of it. Uh, as at the moment, this column, especially from this cash book recipe, is not that useful at the moment. But I will dwell more in future when it comes to the folios, especially with the bank reconciliation statement. Now, let me talk about the analysis of receipts. Uh, the analysis of receipts goes hand in hand with what? Bank. They work together. So whatever I will have under the bank will be the same as what? Analysis of receipts. But what is the analysis of receipt column? This column is used to record the transactions which took place on the same day so that they cannot be transferred to the bank one by one. For example, if on the first, for example, you received more than five cash amounts, you cannot transfer them to bank one by one. Let's say, for example, you, you had 500 which you received on the first. And again, on the first, you received 600. So you must first record 500 analysis and record 600 analysis before you can transfer them as a total to the bank. So it means when we go to the bank, we'll go with a total of 1.1 1 .1 or 1,100 because they took place on the same day. So the analysis of receipts is used to add transactions or amounts which took place on the same day to the bank as a single amount. Now, again, the analysis of receipt can come in this way. Sometimes the question itself can insist that you can only transfer cash on a certain date. For example, they can say you can only transfer cash only on the 30th. It means from the first up to the 30th, you won't transfer anything to the bank. You'll wait uh, for the 30th transition thereafter, add them together here as a total and transfer them to the bank. And again, I'm going to use a question for that so that I can clarify it better. Now, let's talk about the sales. For example, okay, sometimes we sell, remember, we say sales because we sold what? Invent. Please don't be confused. When you sell equipment, you cannot say you made a sale. You only say you made a say when you sold goods, when you sold merchandise, when you sold trading stock, when you sold trading event, you make sales. Remember, if you're a vet vendor, SARS will expect you to have sales inclusive effect. But when we record in our books of account, in this column, we need to make sure that we record the sales without what? Vet. And the vet amount will be added output vet. So when you add the output vet and the sales, you will have a total which must go to the uh, analysis of receipt, which is inclusive of vet, and thereafter will transfer to the bank. As I said, we are going to talk more about the practical part of it at a later stage. So you must always make sure that your sales exclude vet, but your bank must include vet. And remember, the bank is your main column. Why do you say by saying main column? Meaning whatever cash you receive will end up in the bank account. Now, let's talk about the debtors control. Uh, you know, sometimes when you sell goods on credit to debtors, so they pay you according to the terms of pay. It means the minute they pay, you need to record in the cash book receipt because you received cash. But remember, you need not calculate VAT when the debtor is paying you. Why? It's because the amount of VAT was calculated by the time when you initiated that particular sale. It means when you sold to a debtor on credit, meaning you will record in the debtor's journal. So you will calculate the output. But when the debtor pays you, you must come and record in the CBR. So you cannot calculate VAT again because you are going to have what you call the double taxation. Please remember, if you are receiving money from a debtor. For example, let's say you received 200 from a debtor. Obviously, you're going to have 200 like this from a debtor. And thereafter, you need to transfer it what? to the analysis of receipt. Because this is the amount that you received uh, on that particular day, you can transfer it to the bank as how much? 200. Can you see that there is no VAT calculation? Just record the amount that you have received. I think we understand each other. Now, let me talk about the amount, the folio and the details under Sandri account. So what is the main function of Sandri account? 
transact. Sometimes when we transact in a business operation, we normally have accounts which do not have For example, we can receive rent income from any other source. As you can see here, there is no column for rent income. So it means rent income will be recorded under what? Sundry account. So the sundry is accommodating those accounts which do not have columns. For example, like as I said, uh, you let's say you received rent of 600. So under details, you're going to write, write for example, rent income. And then uh, let's say, for example, the amount is 600. Uh, it means I must put the amount here, which is what? Without pay. So, uh, for example, if the amount is 600, I'm going to say 600. For example, and I can divide this by uh, 1.14. That's another way of calculating. And then the answer uh, will definitely. Uh, be the amount that I'm going to record here, for example. Okay, so it means the amount that you must put here must exclude that. So make sure that you always know how to calculate the amount excluding that. And obviously, when you come to that, the VAT amount will come here, and then you must come to the analysis with the amount included. In other words, when you come to the analysis, you need to have how much? 600. But as I said, guys, I'm just going to give you more calculations. Thereafter. So the amount without VAT will be under what? Amount, and the VAT amount will come here, and thereafter the whole amount, including VAT, will come to what? To 600. Let's proceed, guys, so that we cannot waste time. Now, the other thing that we need to talk about is what? Is the cost of sales account. We have got the cost of sales account because we are using perpetual. Remember, if we were using periodic, you will not have cost of sales. You will have other columns other than what? Cost of sales. The fact that we've got cost of sales, it means we're using periodic system. So it means for every sale that you are going to record here, for example, you need to calculate what? Cost of sales. And remember, the cost of sales must be calculated on the sales excluding that. So, for example, if under sales here, you had... 700 shell just for an example here 700 it means you are going to use this 700 to calculate this cost of sales remember the cost of sales sometimes it will give you a markup to calculate cost of sales at the moment i expect you to know how to use the markup in order to calculate what cost of sales and again i'm going to use a question in future just to show you how to calculate the cost of sales once again and remember use i repeat the sales without VAT to calculate the cost of sales. But there are some exceptional cases where you cannot use what this sale, especially where there is a trade discount. If the trade discount was applicable, you can use this amount for sales to calculate cost of sales. You will have to use the amount before you deducted what trade discount to calculate what this cost of sales. So it means the cost of sales must only be calculated on the sales before deducting what trade discount but still that sale you need to take up to take off what vet but again i'm going to show you how to record at the later stage and again guys i just put these things at the bottom here for you so that you can be able to uh, deal with your uh, general ledger at a later stage because you need to know where to transfer this at a later stage but for now i'm just going to leave this it's just an example but let me continue to the next slide guys yes i did try to explain more when it comes to the columns please go through those columns so that you can be able to understand please use my notes they are very useful and then you can be able to to understand the columns better and now i just want to focus on the next channel which is called cash book payments formerly known as cash payments journal the cash book payments is where we record all the cash payments except payments from the petty cash for example if you buy equipment for cash you will come and record under what cash book payments in a nutshell is where you record the outflow of cash again let's go quickly through the uh, columns again similar to 
the cache receipts journal or the cache book receipts we have for this document number where you're going to record the source document number the date and the pay he the pay means the person to whom you paid money or the company to whom you paid money and again this for you guys is not that useful at the moment i'll explain this in more details in the future now again in the cash book payments the main column is the bank remember the main column will always be inclusive of vet where vet is applicable so you must make sure that the amounts which come here will in always include what vet don't confuse the cbp and the cbr under the cbr we do have the analysis of receipts but when it comes to the cbp we don't have analysis of what of payments we only have what bank so to me the cash book payments can be easily understood as compared to what cbr we've got, got a column for creditors control again remember when you buy goods on credit you normally record in the creditors journal but now it's time for you to pay back the creditors when you pay back the creditors that constitutes an outflow of cash it means that cash must be recorded in the cbp because you made a payment again same applies to creditors control as it applies to what debtors control please when you pay an account do not calculate VAT on the payment. Why? It's because at the time when you bought from the creditors on credit, they charged you VAT. So now you must not calculate VAT in order to avoid uh, double taxation. For example, let's say you paid your creditor uh, 800. Obviously, you are going to have 800 under creditors and you just transfer how much under the bank? You transfer 800. Please do not calculate VAT. There are no VAT implications when it comes to the payment on account, whether it is debtors control or creditors control. Now, let's continue to input VAT. Remember, under the cash book receipt, we had output VAT. Why? Because when you sell to customers, you charge them output. But here under the cash book payment, we have what the input VAT. Why? It's because when we buy, they charge us what? Input VAT. Now, the input VAT, remember, needs to be calculated so that you can know how much must you collect from SAS at a later stage. Let me come back to the trading invention. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the trading invention, you must always make sure that the amount excludes what? VAT. It means if the inventory has been bought for a certain amount, yes, the amount will be including VAT. That inclusive amount will be under what? Bank account. But when it comes to inventory, you need to make sure that you take out VAT, put the amount without VAT, and that VAT amount will be under what? Input VAT. But when you go to the bank account, you will include what? VAT. Let's come to the sundry account. Like I explained under the CBR, guys, the sundry account, uh, account is used to cater for those accounts which do not have columns. For example, let's say, for example, I paid for equipment. Can you see that there is no column for equipment? It means, for example, I'm going to come here and record under what? The details, for example, I'm going to say what? Equipment. And for your guys, I'll talk about them at the later stage. And let's say the amount is for is how much, for example, is 100. Is, is, is 400. I'll put 400 here. Let's say uh, when you calculated VAT, this is without VAT. Let's say the VAT you paid, for example, was 100. I'll put 100. I'm just giving an example. But when you go to the bank, the amount will be what? 500. This is just a simple way of dealing with things. So the calculations can become a little bit complicated. But for now, I'm just showing you how to record this in a simplest way. Again, guys, please go through my notes. Uh, they will become useful, I know. Make sure that you know how to explain in your own ways because sometimes in the exam they can ask you theoretical questions based on what this uh, subsidiary journals. Now let me focus on the petty cash journal. Again, as you can see, these uh, formats are like similar in a way. A petty cash journal is like when we buy small items, like we buy some one range, something for five hundred guys. You cannot send a check for something for one hundred guys. At the end of the day, it's going to be very costly to the business. Okay, let's go through this. As you can see, the source document, like the PDK voucher, if you issue the voucher, the voucher number will come here. The date, the details will be what did you buy or for whom did you buy? It depends. And again, the full year, guys, not that useful at the moment. I will explain in the future. 
but here the main account is petty cash so the petty cash is the account that is going to absorb all the amounts inclusive of vet where vet is applicable now for example here let's say for example you bought stationery so the amount of stationery must exclude vet but when you transfer to the care petty cash it must include Let's talk about the staff refreshment. Yes, I did write excluding vet. Normally, the staff refreshments are not uh, claimable. They are non-allowable. So here I was supposed to write, uh, do not calculate vet. So in other words, when you have got this refreshment, don't calculate vet. Just put the amount given to you as it is. If it's 500 here, you put 500 here, and you put 500 here. Please uh, bear with me here. I should have written, do not calculate vet, as this is non-allowable uh, item. I can. And again, we've got the input vet, guys. And the same thing applies to the Sandra account. The Sandra account caters for those accounts which do not have columns here. For example, let's say I bought something like uh, packing material using my petty cash. I'll have the packing material here, and I'll put the amount excluding vet here. I'll put the vet amount here. I'll add them together, and I'll put the vet amount, the vet amount together with the packing material here, which is the amount including vet again guys make sure that you go through my notes just for clarity yes at a later stage we'll be able to go through some of the difficult questions maybe they can be useful in future uh let's focus on the next channel which is called uh data channel data channel is where we record sales of inventory on credit i repeat only when you sell in a trading inventory only when you sell trading stock, only when you sell booth, only when you sell merchandise. So if you sell any other thing on credit, you cannot come here. You only come here if you sold goods on credit. You sell equipment on credit, you cannot come here. You will go to the general channel. Okay. Again, let's go through the column quickly. The document number, the date, the details it means to whom did you sell stock on credit. Under this uh, data channel, this will be useful because, for example, if you have got Sylvester, for example, here as your data, for example, you are going to write Sylvester, for example. And then Sylvester will be data number one, for example. So this one will be useful in this case, but I'm going to show you some calculations in the later stage. So again, you need to decide which column is the main column. The main column here is what? Is data's control. It means your data's control must be inclusive of VET. So all the main columns must include VET where VET is applicable. And again, the sales must exclude VET. And that VET that you excluded here, you need to put it under output VET. But when you add them together, they will always make what? Data's control. Okay. So it means if they ask you in the exam, let's say, for example, they left a symbol for you to fill in here. So if they gave you output VET and they gave you the data's control, how can you find sales? You just have to say data control minus one output to get what? Sales. So sales plus output vet will always give you what? Cost uh, uh, data control. Please do not add cost of sales to this two to make data control because cost of sales already is part of what? Of sales. So cost of sales you need not uh, add at all. And again, we've got output vet. Why do we have output vet? It's because when you sell to your customers, you charge them output vet. And that output vet belongs to SAS. The same applies to the cost of sales that I explained under the CP. When you calculate cost of sales, make sure that you use the amount. For example, if the amount was 300 here, it means you are going to use this 300 to calculate what? Cost of sales by using the markup given to you. Remember, the markup can either be on cost and the markup can either be or on selling price. So, guys, I expect you to know how to use the markups at the moment. But again, when we go through the practical questions, we can try to go through some of those markups at the end of the day. Yes. But again, remember, if the trade discount is involved, you will not use what this trend amount. You will use the original amount from the question. Just take out VET only and calculate cost of sales on that sale but before minusing what trade discount. Just go and take out back on that original amount. Where well, can you find that original amount? You can only find it from the question itself. Do not use 300 here to calculate the cost of sales. You can only use the 300 if there is no trade discount. Guys, once again, please 
go through my notes, you'll find some important information there, and then uh, come back to me if it doesn't make sense. For now, let's focus on the debtors allowances journal. Uh, honestly speaking, debtors allowances journal means you sold goods on credit, you recorded them under the debtors journal. Those customers or debtors return goods to you. That's why sometimes debtors allowances journals are called debt, uh, sales returns journal because the customers are returning goods back to you. Let's go through the formats. We've got the source document number, the date, the details if like who returned. If Sylvester returned, you're going to write Sylvester, and Sylvester was data number one, write data number one. And what is the main column? Still, the main column will be what? Data's control. Meaning whatever you record here must be including what? That. So again, we used to have sales under what? Data general. But now because these are the returns, you need to say what? Sales returns. But it doesn't change the fact that you need to exclude what? That. And that that is input. Why do you call it input? Is because it was called output under what? Data general. So we're just trying to reverse that particular output. Again, guys, the cost of sales calculations will be the same as what you calculate under what? The DJ, when you calculate under what? CBR. Guys, again, for more information, please go through my notes. And then if they don't make sense, please let's interact. Let's make sure that we make a success out of this slide, guys. They are very much useful. I think you can use them for your advantage. Now, let me focus on the creators journal. What do we record under the uh, creators journal? We record all the items which have been bought on credit. Please don't be confused. Data Jenna, we record sales of trading inventory only on credit. But when it comes to the creditors Jenna, we record all the items that you bought on credit. So, so you must know the difference between the two. So again, let's go through the format. We've got the source document number, the date the details, the folio, again, which one is the main account? The main account here is our data control. It means the amount transferred to this column must be inclusive of VET where VET is applicable. For example, if you bought inventory, so it means the amount of inventory will include VET, like the amount given to you will include VET. You must first take out VET so that the amount can be excluding VET, and that VET must be under input, and thereafter, the total amount including VET must be under the creator's control. Again, we can see here we have got what we call the sundry account. When it comes to sundry account, what does this mean? It means this caters for any other account which does not have a column. For example, if we bought vehicle on credit it means there's no vehicle column here it means we're going to write vehicle here for example we're going to write vehicle and then for you as i said i'll come back to them let's say you bought it for fifty thousand, and you're going to just say fifty thousand here excluding vet by the way and then let's say the vet was five thousand i'm just giving an example and you're going to write vet here uh, as five thousand. remember just for explanatory purposes and when you come here, you're going to have how much? 55,000. This is just a simple way of showing you guys, but I'm going to show you more at a later stage. Guys, once again, please make sure that you go through my notes for more information. As I said, guys, they can be very, very useful. Please use them, use them to your advantage. Now, we have got what we call the creditors allowances channel. Remember, I just talked about the creditors channel. Remember, under the creditors journal, we bought items on credit from other people or from other sources. So now we have got the right to return the goods which do not meet our expectations, for example. So by returning those goods, there must be a specific journal for the returns by us to the supplier. That book is called CAJ or Creditors Allowances Journal. Again, it's similar to what we just did. We still have the source document, we have got the date, we have got the details. In other words, if I return goods, I'm going to write record macro. And again, you must ask yourself a question. Which one is our main column? Our main column here is our creator's control. It means all the amounts inclusive of VET, where VET is applicable, will come here. For example, if you returned inventory, so the amount of inventory must be without VET. You take off VET from that amount, and VET is put under what? Output bed and the total amount in this will come to a creator's control. Now, when it comes to the sundry account, 
like I said, like I explained under the CDP, the CDP under the CDR, under the CJ, the sundry account will cater for those items which do not have columns. For example, you've got the packaging material, it means you're going to write packaging material here and you put its amount here, but make sure that if it is vetable, the amount is without vet, and you put the amount under vet and you transfer the amount into so vet under what? The creator's control guide. And again, guys, once again, make sure that you use my notes for your advantage. Please, uh, I took an effort uh, to make sure that I compile these notes for you. Please use them to make me happy. I know with these notes, you can be able to make it. Um, the next journal, which is the last journal, is called the General Journal. Guys, uh, General Journal is the last journal. And how will you know that you must come and record in the GJ? All the transactions which cannot be recorded in all the other subsidiary journals must be recorded in the GG. What do I mean by saying that? If I see a transaction and I realize that I cannot record that in, in the CBR, CBP, CJ, CAJ, DJ, DAJ, PCJ, it means the only option for me is going to be what? GJ. So it's better for you to master the other channels so that it can be easier for you to know that you must record under GJ. But I did give you some additional notes so that I can show you some of the transactions that you need to expect so that you can be able to record in the GJ. For example, in my next slide, as you can see, these are the examples of transactions which you need to record under what? GJ. For example, non-cash capital contribution. What do I mean uh, by doing that? Remember, the owner, sometimes when he or she contributes capital to the business, that capital can come in the form of cash from him. So if it comes in the form of cash, it will go to the CBR because the business is receiving cash. But if that particular capital contribution is in the form of a non-cash, for example, in the form of equipment, in the form of vehicle, in the form of uh, land and building, that will go to what? GJ, because that is not cash. Remember, contribution in the form of cash will go to the CBR. Sometimes our creditors charge interest on our accounts. Maybe it's because we forfeited our, we didn't pay our accounts according to the terms of payment. When they charge you that interest, that interest is not cash at that moment. That interest will only increase the account at the moment. So that interest will be recorded in the GJ. The same applies to us when we charge our customers for not paying their accounts on time. So remember, when we charge them, they don't give us cash immediately. So because that uh, interest will just increase the account for time being, we will record that in the GG. And again, guys, it will make sense when you record the practical uh, uh, amounts that, that you see at a later stage. Now, let's talk about the drawings account. Uh, sometimes, remember, we take something for own use from the business. So if you take cash for own use, that cash will go to the CBP because that is an outflow of cash. But sometimes the owners can take something that is not cash. For example, they can take a table from the business uh, for own use at home. They can take a car for own use. They can uh, take something that belongs to the business, which is not cash for own use. Those will go to a GJ. Sometimes when we encourage customers to pay on time, those who owe us, let's say debtors, uh, we normally grant them discounts. Those discounts are called settlement discount granted. And sometimes the creators give us discounts. So we call those discounts settlement discount uh, receipt. So those discounts can only be recorded in the GJ. Why? Because those discounts are not in the form of what? Of cash. For example, if my customer owes me or my debtor owes me 500 and I just tell him to pay me only 400 and take that 100 rand as a discount, that 100 rand was not in the form of cash. He only paid what? 400 rand. So 100 rand is not cash because he never gave me cash. Unlike if, if, let's say, for example, he gave me 500 and I say, take this 100 rand back. So it will mean that that discount is what? Is cash. But in business, we don't do that. We just say, instead of paying me the full amount, pay me what? Less than what you uh, owe me. So in that case, we will record in the GJ. Both settlement discount granted and settlement discount received. 
Uh, when it comes to debtors again, you know, sometimes debtors don't pay their accounts. We try to trace them, we call them, they change their numbers, they change their addresses, they change their IDs. So at the end of the day, we end up saying, no, we don't expect to recover that cash anymore. What must we do? We just have to write them off. In other words, we cancel them. We don't expect their money anymore. So the minute you cancel them, you call that credit losses or you call it what? Bad debt. So in that case, it means you must go and record in the GJ because you cannot record that in the CBR, you cannot record in the CBP, you cannot record in all the other journals. The only option is to go to GJ. The last one that I want to talk about is about the correction of error. You know, sometimes, you know, accountants, bookkeepers, accounting legs are human beings. So they make errors. You know, sometimes you can find that you were supposed to record in the telephone account, you recorded the stationary account by mistake. That is an error. That error can only be rectified under what? GJ. Sometimes instead of recording under equipment, you record under what? Stationary, for example. So the error can only be corrected in the GJ. Uh, I think I, I, we try to summarize this and uh, I will try to avail time so that I can be able to show you some of the calculations so that you can be able to calculate. But for now, guys, thank you very much. Please use this to your advantage and then we'll meet soon. Uh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate and then have a nice day. And let's communicate further, guys. I know you don't have time, but please, man, just interact. You know, your assignments, your ice tasks are very much important. Some of us guys, we don't even have a, a single ice task. Let's make sure that we write ice tasks so that we can be. Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated.